You're yeah. live. Cool. We're live. So you were just telling me how unimpressive my 19,000 YouTube followers are well, because the ones you know have got like millions. Yeah. But that's very different things. Like I have quality followers. Quality. What do you mean by that? Like they're actually interested in what I do. It's like gaming YouTubers. All right. I mean, it's... Well, um, Mark Rober. Yeah. Okay. No, he's good though. He's, he's super yeah. smart. Like he deserves. How many has he got? Like millions? I think... I don't know, like 20 million. But most of my followers are on Twitter as well, because most of the stuff I do is on Twitter. Hmm. And then there's like a subsection, which you hear. And then they'll be, see, because there'll be people tuning into this already. And they'll just come from other places and they won't necessarily be YouTube subscribers. What about if someone is doing something like really impressive? Oh, well, like, if they're doing something really impressive. Like, yeah. dude, dude Perfect, they've got like uh, 50 million subscribers and they do like trick shots and yeah. against each other. Yeah, but again, it's not like high. Yeah. It's just it's just people sitting on their couch eating popcorn. There's people who want to learn and do interesting things. All right. Uh, so, yesterday we were doing we did Code Combat. The day before that we did Code dot org. So the chronology was we started with the really basic stuff. Mm -hmm. We moved on to some things that were more advanced, and then yesterday we kept going to look at places, and it's like, yeah. hey, spend ninety nine dollars, spend ninety nine dollars, and then we're like. Actually, Code Combat's pretty freaking awesome. Let's spend $99. Yeah. So we spent $99. Well, we spent $99. I spent $99. Yeah. <laughs> now, not money, not mine. Now you're in there. It's your education. And we wanted to start looking at HTML because what I'd like to do just to sort of round out the week is we'll do HTML uh, in Code Combat today. And then tomorrow we're going to do HTML uh, just in Visual Studio Code, which you have been doing for a while, which, mm -hmm. which is fine. And then the day after that, then we'll actually start publishing your website and doing things like that. Yeah. So, so like, but when we subscribed, like, we already. could get, like, like all of, like, the devices, um, Bottle theme, brew glory. skins, right into my like... Trap. Just keep in mind, every, every time you click on that and it makes sound, people yeah. are hearing that sound over your voice. So, okay. Sh should I mute no, it? No, 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 that's... Well, if... if oh, good question. If you mute it, does it mute it for other people or does it just mute it out of our speakers? We no, 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 like mute sites. Yeah, yeah, but that stops it playing on the speakers, but the site is still making that sound. I have no idea. Oh, actually, here's a tangent, because we were listening to something really interesting yesterday that was related to this. Remember the podcast we were listening to? Uh, Darknet Diaries. Yeah, so we were listening to Darknet Diaries, uh, and Jack Resider was interviewing Sammy Kamkar. <coughs> My bleed is yours. And you remember, every time you click on that, it makes noise over us. So stop clicking stuff. <laughs> Just won't escape. Stop it. So the, the chat with Sammy was really interesting because Sammy was talking about how as a kid he was trying to figure out how to hack games. <clears throat> and so he you get like aimbot and god mode. Yeah, correct. And and the, the thing that he was talking about with sound is he said um, he just stop clicking. Right. Wait. <laughs> he said with sound, when he was playing I think he was playing Counter Strike, wasn't he? Yeah, Counter Strike. He said he could hear someone else's footsteps in the speakers because this is the nature of the game, right? Like the, mm -hmm. the footsteps would be broadcast through the speakers and he could hear it go from like the speaker there to the speaker there. And so he was thinking, okay, so that the, the computer must know where the person is because they then play the sound in the correct way. So what if I could hook into the code and I could rather than just have the computer play sound but have the computer like literally tell me precisely where the person is because the computer mm -hmm. knows but it's just broadcast and sound. So yeah. anyway, I think that sort of stuff is really, really fascinating. It was, and it's a pretty cool episode, isn't it? I think you actually enjoy listening to that. Mm. So, Thanks, Jack um, and Sammy. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, so all these all these characters highlighted in um, well, a bit, bit of blue you can buy. So I bought the two. My snares are ready. This one. So this one and this one. Right into my trap. <laughs> they want to and when you say just before you do this so so when you say buy are you just buying it with like yes. in-game credit yeah like okay. not not actual money yeah thanks um so um it's like good damage good health good speed um and he has some skills that i have no idea how to use them face shift it sounds cool all though. doctors shadow vortex blink face shift and it's like that there are different types um so like different types of people so like the warriors rangers and wizards mm -hmm. so like warriors are just like knights with like swords heavy armor 
And th- this this only became available once we actually paid the money, yeah. Yeah, like what? what yeah. No, like what? Well, once each character is either a warrior, a ranger, or a wizard. Um, but you, sorry, you you only got those characters once we paid the money. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, well, I had to get, um I had to use my in-game credits. But okay, all right. Yeah. Um. So you could only use warrior because warriors are pretty basic, and then there are rangers with like, um. Like crossbows and um, rifles. Incidentally, someone just said in the comments that muting sight actually mutes it for the stream as well. Uh, so, alright, we've learned something. Thank you. Um, and like, for wizard, lightning, twig, crystal wands. Um, now there are pets, which is cool. So, for, for you as a, as a kid doing code combat, yes. like this, this bit here isn't code. But this, like, you enjoy doing this, right? Yeah, because it just makes it a bit more fun. All right, which is cool, and I, I really like this concept with Code Combat and Code.org as well, where yeah. where the kids using it are like, this is actually fun. I want to do this. I don't know if you ever mm-hmm. heard Al, my seven year old daughter, say this, but she comes to me and say, "Daddy, I've been good. Can I please do some coding?" Which is cool, right? Like she sees sitting there doing coding as like a bit of a treat. A reward. Yeah, a reward exactly. So should I go here? So here, or here? I deliberately didn't look at what was in these levels because I wanted to sort of experience it for the first time on the live stream. But you've obviously done seven levels I've of done, word about. Like yeah. you just sat in your room at your desk and coded yesterday, which I was, yeah. which I was very proud of that. <laughs> so why don't you show me? Let's go to like the most basic level here and then see some of the more advanced things you've done. So add anything to the page. I just had to type in anything. Okay, so hold on just a moment here because I want to see what's going on here as well. Yeah, I'm just going to restart. Okay. All right, so most of this is in the comments, right? So just read us through the comments and explain what happens. So w- welcome to Code Combat de- Development, Web Development. You will learn the basics of web development. A few lines of comments, read them for help. Write anything below to change the web page. So now- I-, I-, I can <coughs> literally just type anything. Yep, okay. And I'm done. So be, before we go any further, just stop a moment. Seriously, stop a moment. All right. Look in the top right-hand corner. It says language HTML. So mm-hmm. before, we'd always seen Python and JavaScript. Now I've got HTML. Notice the comments. Something's different in the way the comments are here compared to when we saw the comments in JavaScript. Can you see what it is? Oh, they have um, like these symbols. Yeah, right. So... Different languages, different syntax for indicating what a comment is. Mm. So in JavaScript, it was two forward slashes, which yeah. is the way we'd normally comment something in JavaScript anyway. In HTML, it's the lesson angle bracket, exclamation mark, dash, dash. So yeah. this actually then encapsulates the whole comment. So it has, it has the start of the comment and yeah. the end of the comment as well, where in JavaScript, we just had the yeah. two forward um, slashes at the beginning. And also, um, with the characters I have, um, there's something that you have to do every single time. Um, just go here. Why snares are ready. So you've gone back to a previous level here. Yeah, um, just to previous show you map. something. Yeah. Um, so, um. Babbard Shield. Just, hey, just in the, in the comments, if, um, Babbard let me know if that Babbard game Shield. audio, Babbard just stop a second. Babbard Shield. <laughs> in the comments let me know if the game audio is too loud a few people yesterday mentioned it was too loud so I just turned it down on OBS so if, in fact I'm going to turn it down a little bit here anyway I, I think we can just do this and we'll, we'll see how that goes because I just want to make sure that because you keep clicking while you're talking and it plays the game audio that you're not getting drowned out mm-hmm. let us know if that's not right if it needs to be quieter all right um, so what are you going to show us here and also there line one see how your comments are very different there your comment syntax um so this map is very basic, but um, now, um, so while true, instead of being like highlighted blue, um, it's um, like JavaScript. Because the previous while loops we'd seen were, yeah, like we're, just, were in Python. Yeah. Right. Um, so like here, if, um, instead of just typing hero, I have to type hero.move. Mm-hmm. And then 
So here it don't move up. Um, and sometimes it wouldn't come with whatever that whatever that semicolon. Means, semicolon. Yep. So sometimes they'd have to put it there. Because in Python we weren't using semicolons to yep. terminate a line, but here we are in JavaScript. I um, mean, sometimes when I have, well, usually when I have to attack, um, I would have to, it's like, um, I'd have to put, um, quotes, whatever they're called. So what, can you remember, putting, uh, putting double quotes around it, what does that then treat that as? So what sort of data type is that? Oh. Uh. Remember we spoke about data types yesterday? Yeah. Can you remember any of the data types? Methods. Well, no, a, a method does something. It performs an action. So can you remember we said there are different types of data? No, I don't remember. Okay, remember there were strings? Oh, yeah, strings, tags. No. Uh, so I, I find that when we when we do this, because we've had this discussion lots of times, we, we've got to keep sort of repeating the same, so I guess it's just for all of us learning, repeating the same stuff over and over and over again. So there were strings, which mm. you encapsulated with double quotes. You know what I mean by encapsulate? No. Nope. Put around. <laughs> that's, that's literally it. There were, what did we call numbers? What? What did we call numbers? Um, what kind of data type is a number? Oh, it starts with a B. No, it doesn't. <laughs> All right, let's go through them again. So we had strings, which mm -hmm. was, it could be anything. It could be words, it could be symbols. It, it could also include numbers. We had integers. Mm -hmm. So integers were numbers, but they're not decimals, right? So one, two, three, yeah. four. So an and integer is... 1.3. Right, so 1.3 yeah. would, would normally be a decimal. We will avoid going down the path of floats and things like this at the moment, mm -hmm. but it would normally be a decimal. So the one starting with B was a true false, wasn't it? True, false, yeah. yes, no. Yeah, um, B, B, uh, I don't know. Boolean. Boolean, yeah. So it was Boolean. Uh, and of course we had dates as well. Because remember we said the data types are important because you can do something with a date that you can't do, say, with a string. So with mm -hmm. a date, you can have like two different dates and you can say, well, how many, how many seconds are between these two different dates? Wait, what? What? Huh? Well, a, a date is a particular type of data that you can do functions on that you can't do with, say, a number. So if you had two dates, programming languages will let you say what's how much time is between these two dates. So, for example, what if you were saying, if you're writing software and you said, I need to know how many seconds there are between now and when you need to start school this morning because you're getting really excited about school. We'll talk about online learning in a moment too, because I think that's interesting. But what, what I'm saying is, is that the, the, the time right now is, is a date and a time, mm -hmm. and the time that you have to start school at nine o'clock is like a date and a time as well. Yep. So because they're very specific data types, you can then use functions like how many seconds are there between now and when you have to start school. You can't um, figure out how many seconds there are between two strings unless you can convert them to a date. Yeah, so... Um, all right, why did we end up here? Because we're doing HTML. Um, oh, I was just showing, like, with the new with the new subscription. Oh, okay, yes, because you got stuff with the new subscription. Yeah. Um, yeah, so here's really basic, and then this level I'm stuck on. Okay, so, so we're back. What were the things that you were going to learn here? Oh, it was CSS as well. Yeah. So have you done any CSS before? No. Welcome to hell. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> okay, so what do you understand about CSS? CSS? Yeah. Where does it say that? Well, oh, yeah. okay, let's go back because I feel like you just skipped past it a bit too quickly. Was it this one? Yeah. Okay, it's called Stylish Intent. When we click on that, it says you're going to learn basic HTML and basic CSS. So let's play and see if it tells you here. Have you learned what CSS is? No. All right, so CSS is cascading style sheets. So it's a way of applying styles and visual effects to your web page. So for example, what happens if you want to make text a different color? Or what happens if you mm. want to make a background a different color? And there's a, like, it's a lot more full Yeah, and if you want, to sell a, you want to change the style. 
Correct. So that's the style and it, it, it cascades because you can start setting style sheets that then cascade through different elements on your page and then you can change the way the whole thing is themed. So let's start this. The style tag, the, the style tag, style your HTML or CSS. Okay, line one's a bit, bit wordy, but anyway, check the hints for information on CSS. All right, so let's actually go through these tags because I think it's really important to understand what the tags mean. So line four, what does this tell you? So what sort of tag have we got here on line four? Uh, um, um, a head tag. All right, cool. Now, it's a special, it's a particular type of head tag because it's not just an H. You know what we should do, actually? We should go F11, full screen. Look at that. Cool. So it's it's actually an H1. So what does an H1 mean compared to, say, what's on line 5, which is an H6? No idea. So that, so these are, these are like a hierarchy. So a, a page might have one great big heading. So think about, I know it's just going to be depressing to open the news, but I'm going to go to a browser here. Let's say uh, news.com.au. Oh, so d does does that show where? No, so they don't see that. So I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna pick here. I'm gonna pick something that's just not virus related. <laughs> uh, oh, star ambushed by nude streaker. What? Okay, now let's leave that one alone. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, I'll tell you what. Out of all the news at the moment, that's I, I'd, I'd, I think I'd rather read about that <laughs> than like. Serious illnesses and things. Cheeky uh, way greedy shoppers stopped. Oh man, I, I can't even read some of these headlines <laughs> on YouTube. Um, uh, uh, oh, Kim Star. Kardashian and Taylor Swift. This is like the, the one time you can put like a Kim Kardashian What's story that? here. She. Well, that's a good question. What the hell is a Kardashian? I don't know. Anyway, they're they're who's, famous. Who's, who's Kim Kardashian? <sighs> Duh. We'll talk about that later. Anyway. The, the point is, see how there's like one big headline here, yeah. right? Like that. So this is a heading. Now this might also be a heading. This is like a byline. Okay, but this is not as important as this, is it? Uh -huh. So there, there's a hierarchy to headings. And if we look at all sorts of different things, even if we go to like my, um, let's go to my blog actually, because I use headings there all the time. We won't, I don't know that guy. We <laughs> who is that guy? So if we go to my blog, and we go through to, let's go, you know what, let's go to this one about you learning to code. So this heading here, okay, mm -hmm. is bigger than, than this heading here. Because it's more important. Because it's more important. And in fact, when you're in the browser, we can right click on this and we can say inspect. And it will come back and you'll see that this is a head one, because that's really important. And if I go down to this one, oh, that one's actually a three. Not so it's not so important. It's like correct. the higher you go, the less important. Yeah, yeah, it is. because yeah, correct. So it's it's uh, it's hierarchical. So this is the most important thing because this is the title of the page. Mm. Coding with Ari for kids at home, and you can also see right at the top of the tab here, you can just see it says coding with Ari for kids at home as well. Yeah. This one down here is a subheading, and I've got multiple subheadings because we've got day one in there, we've got day two in there, and this will be really meta. So this is us now. Yeah. All right, day three. Hi. So, uh, so headings have hierarchies. Now, when we get into the style tag, so we, we get down to line six, and then you see that now we're in CSS, and the syntax for CSS is different to the syntax for HTML. So see how all the HTML, we have like angle brackets, okay? Mm -hmm. So these are called tags. And once we get down to style, what we're doing now is we're actually styling some of those tags. Yeah. So for example, line seven, what do you think that refers to? H6, um, not very important. Well, it, it refers to this. And then what are we doing to the H6 tag? We, uh, so what does line eight tell you? Te text line center. Right. Oh, so it's, sorry. It's like it's getting... So th this is not so important, so it's getting it small and putting it in the middle. Well, in, in fact, it, it doesn't tell us. So line uh, where we set that where we set that style for the H6 tag, it doesn't tell us what size to make it. But by default, your browser will make more important headings bigger. So an H1 oh, is bigger yeah. than an H2, which is bigger than an H3. Yeah, so the news. But what that, it's, that'd be pretty big. What it's telling us is to center it now. 
if you have a look on line five, it says Kithgard edition, and then we have a look to the left of the screen, see where Kithgard edition appears on the screen? Right there. Right, and it's in the center, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, let's go down to line 10. So what's line 10 talking about? Um, H1, so that would be in use. Right, and what are we doing to that H1 tag? Um, making it red and, and underlined. Okay, cool. So then on line 13, what does it say you need to do? Align to center using the text align. Okay, do it. Align what? Well, it's going to align the contents of the H1 tag to the center. So you can you can cheat a little bit because a little bit further up the page, we just saw how to do that. Where? We just literally spoke okay. about text align. Hmm. What's on line eight? Text line center. Okay. All right. Now, what just happened then? Did you see in the... No. Oh, right. yeah. It's... See that? So it's now in the middle. <laughs> You're trying to reach under the microphone. All right, cool. So you can see that happen immediately. Now, we didn't put a semicolon on the end, but it still worked. Yeah. So this is yeah, one of the fun things about the web. is like there's a whole bunch of standards, and then browsers often work even when you don't follow the standards. Cool. But we try and follow the standards. So for consistency here in the code, how should we end that line? Beautiful. All right, so what's the next uh, next goal here? Colors can be purple, orange, blue, etc. Et All right, so it, I think it wants us to style this. Now, just before we do this, what are we actually going to style here? So if we were to make this whatever color you're going to make it, mm -hmm. what's actually going to change on the page? The, the text. What text? Because Which line 16 tells us what text. Okay, so all the P tags will then have the color that you choose. Can you remember what a P tag is? Nope. So P is paragraph. Oh, yeah. Why did you do aqua? Oh, jeez. <laughs> will aqua work? I think it'll work. Yeah, I think uh. it does work. How are we going to finish the line? So what's cool here is that this is quite powerful, right? Because every single paragraph on the page just went aqua with one little change here in CSS. So if you were to build like a whole website and you wanted to change the color on every single paragraph on every single page of your website and you're using CSS properly, you can change it in one place and everything works. Isn't that cool? It only works if you spell it correctly. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh -uh. Hey, and hey, just to make it really good fun, um, Let's be super advanced. So you know how in, in school you learn how to mix different colors together? Like you can take a couple of different colors, mix oh, them yeah. together, and you get a different color. Yeah. And I, never, I never paid attention. <laughs> okay. Well, this is going to be fun then. Uh, uh, can, you, can you remember, you've probably been taught that there are like three colors, and if you mix yeah, those three so colors. red, blue, yellow. No. Try again. Ever heard RGB? Oh, red, green, Yellow. No. no yellow doesn't start with B. <laughs> you need to go back to school, man. Not too hard either. Um, I'd rather get Corona than go back to school. Oh, don't say that. I don't think you can make jokes about it yet. Um, RGB. What starts with B? What color? Fundamentally important color. Blue. Right. Cool. Red, green, blue. So you've got red, green, and blue. So mm -hmm. what we can do, and in fact we'll do this later on, is rather than just saying like aqua we can specify how much red, how much blue, how much green, and we can pick pretty much any color we want just by specifying how much red, green, blue. Well, so, okay, how would you make black? Well, okay, you can type black, you can do that. But let's, let's imagine your teacher, your art teacher, so we were in your art room yesterday, right? So imagine you're in your art room, she gives you red paint, green paint, blue paint, and you need to make black. How do you do it? Paint, green paint, blue paint. 
I don't know. You just mix them all together. Really? Yep. As much red as you can, as much green as you can, as much blue as you can. Mm. Anyway, we'll get back to that. That's probably another exercise. Okay, so you finished this level. So this is the one you got stuck on yesterday, was it? Mm-hmm. All right, so that's all fine. Do we, do we just cl- click on run on that so we can go to the next one? Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Did you did you get stuck on another one or should we just move on to another one? Let's move on to another one. Alright, so something else still in web development. It's big and tall do. Yeah, no, don't, let's just read this. Basic HTML, basic CSS. Images can be any shape or size, big and tall, or small and stout. Okay. Alright, can you just read the goal coin. here? Goals to add a third image, alter the third image. Oh, okay, I can do that. Hopefully. So, another image tagged. So, you just clicked the button that says image gallery. So, it looks like they provide you a bunch of images. So, you're going to mm. choose an image. I'm actually trying to get a, to get a bit worried because there are some really mean looking images <laughs> that I haven't seen. Now, when you click on that, let's just have a look at what's happening on this page so before you click off. Image, copy the URL. All right, so don't know this yet. So the, the URL, do you know what URL is? Uh, no. Okay, so, so URL is always like a website address, right? Mm-hmm. Stands for Universal Resource Locator, which you really want to know. But anyway, so URL is a website address. And we can see up in that website address, it says HTTPS, and then we've got multiple parts in a URL so we've got the scheme so this says it's going to be a secure connection because it's got an S in it this is the domain codecombat.com mm-hmm. and then this is oh <laughs> I accidentally dragged Daddy. it undo okay and then this bit here is the path so this is in a file or there's a folder called file which then has a folder called DB which then has a folder called etc etc and then here is the file name which is portrait.png. So this is like the full URL of that file, scheme, domain, path, file name. Mm. Okay, and then it's generated the image tag. So you know every time you see IMG in an HTML tag, then that's an image. All right, so do you wanna, do you wanna copy that? And we'll... Now what's gonna go into your HTML? Are you gonna put in the URL or are you gonna put in the image tag? All right, so you just shortcut Control C, very good. Paste that, nice. Okay, and then that renders onto the canvas over there on the left. Yeah, and then it would take it resized using attributes, width and height. So do you know what they mean by attribute? Nope. Okay, let's have a look at say line seven. So have a look at the image on line seven. How's the width set? Um, width 32. 32 what? I thought it was like. Okay, I thought so, it was going to be like pixels. Well, that's, that's a good question. So it is pixels. Uh, and pixels is implicit. So it, it, it's implied, which means it's not said, but the browser interprets it that way. Uh, hey, someone's just made a comment here that says you can't work with paint, only light colors mixed to RGB. So someone's just shown that I know nothing about art. But I do know how to do web development. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I thought that nothing. But isn't it like, if is it blue and yellow you mix to get green? Yeah. Interesting. Okay, let's leave the art out of it and just stick to stuff I know. <laughs> All right, so, so width, so let's go back to line seven. The way width is in there, so the HTML tag is an image tag. Width is an attribute. So width sits inside an image tag and it sets a value on the image tag. So it's setting the value of width. Now this is kind of interesting because I was wondering if that was going to work or not. How does your line 11 look different to line 7? 11 to 7. You've done something different with your width tag to what they did with their width tag. Oh yeah. Yeah, I didn't add the... Bunny double, ears. double quotes. Is that what you call them? Bunny ears. No. What? 
Can you see the problem? What? Huh? Because no. There's two problems at present. Nice. Now there's one problem, Yay. but it still works. What's the one problem? Don't tell me. Oh, yeah. But see, this is what we are talking about just before, where browsers are very liberal. They let you get away with stuff that you probably shouldn't be able to. So yeah. things like, like if you're writing JavaScript and you make mistakes like that, stuff just doesn't work most of the time. But with HTML, the browsers are, ah, it's close enough. Yeah. Usually. But then it depends on the browser, because it might work on one browser, but then not on another browser. I can hear that. I hate how you get so little gems now. Are we, I almost feel like we're going backwards here. Are we going to do easier things rather than harder things? Is there, um, a, is that is there a sequence like you follow the path, and as you go yeah. along the path, it gets harder? I, yeah. So what's like one say in the middle? What if you went to that one just there? Illustrious imagery. You, you, you're just putting in. Ah, oh, okay. All right. Okay, let's go back to something so, better. Okay. So I think hard. you've worked that out now. Okay, well, actually, this will be interesting. Okay, so what are we going to learn here? List of animals, animals of things. Okay, but let's read through. Can you read the comments on line one to three for us? One to three. Tags are for grouping. Stands, stands for... Well, hang on, what tags what? are for grouping? Read oh. all of line one. Um, something, 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 UL, something, tag are for grouping, something, LI... Tags, something, okay, something, don't something, don't something. actually read the common syntax. So read like this: UL tags are for grouping LI tags. Okay, UL stands for unordered list. LI are for, in, are for individual list items. So when we start, like if we look at line seven, we've got a UL tag, right? Yeah. And then inside the UL tag, we've then got LI tags. So list items sit inside unordered lists. So we've got to remember HTML tags often encapsulate other HTML tags. Remember what I said encapsulate was? Like goes around, okay? So we've I got forget. we've got our list items inside our unordered list. So we use lists when we want to try and represent a, a series of things. Now in this case, these are animals with wings. Flying antelope. Uh, apparently flying antelope, yeah. I know. Pterodactyls and eagles. Now have a look at line 12. What's going on with line 12? Just a sec. Okay. <laughs> <That'll do. laughs> um, th th this is sort of a little bit interesting. So th there's a few things I think we not want to look at here. So number one, there's a red exclamation mark on line 20. It's like something's wrong on line 20. So what's... Uh... Crikey, what happened there? <laughs> Did you break it? <laughs> no, I, I just clicked. Oh, all right. You, you clicked the little button on the side of my mouse. Which who, actually, who, who puts a little button on the side of a mouse? It's a back button. It's a back button. You're... Back. Okay. So what... We, no, no. That's good. That's still... It, it kept it. Okay. So what are we going to do on line 20? Delete it. No, there's something missing. So you're starting another list item. Or did you want to do something differently? What were you thinking? Without typing it, what were you thinking? Um, I was thinking that, that maybe I put the LI, um, maybe I forgot to put the LI for the golden, for the eagle. Well, the, the LI tag comes before the text. Yeah. So golden eagle has a list item tag just here. But so, so here's what's interesting. See here, we've got, this is an open tag and there's a closed tag. So closed tag always starts with a forward slash like that. Mm -hmm. So bees, 
It's like open list item bees, close list item. And then line nine, open list item, flying antelopes, close list item. So that has opening and close tags. But what's interesting is that when we get down to say line 12, there's no close tag. But it still works because again, like browsers allow you to get away with stuff. So what we really want to have down here, if we wanted to make everything super, super neat, is we want to have a close list item tag. Now, it's funny how it gets away with some stuff but not other stuff. If we go down and look at this, see so if we hover over it, it says oh. expected closing tag, oh. unexpected end of file. So we've gotten to the end of the file, but what close tag do you think is missing here? Um... A lot of this is, is, is you should be looking for patterns, right? I do. Now, is that a closed tag or an open tag? Whoops. Because look at what's happened to your, your canvas on the Whoops. left. All right, that's cool, but the error hasn't gone away. Why not? It's a closed tag. Okay, so the, we've got the list item tags. Which tag are the list item tags inside of? Because there's something else which is, which is higher in the hierarchy than the list item. And also, I would, yeah, I would do that. I would like to have all my list items on individual lines because that's easy to read, isn't it? And let's indent them because this might help you figure out where the problem is. Indent. So indent means put spaces at the beginning. So see how that didn't work too well. Then. <laughs> I'm very smart. Okay, now let's let's put one more space ah. so that's at the same level as the comment. So let's go up to line Stupid nineteen. Duck. Okay, line nineteen. One more space. Okay. Now, what do you have to do on line 20? Stuck somewhere. Okay, now, just one thing. When a web browser loads an HTML page, it doesn't care about all the spaces. It doesn't care if you have spaces. It doesn't care if you have tabs. It only cares about the tags. So we're not doing this to make oh. the code work better. We're only doing this so it's easier for you to read. Now, do those two list items on line 19 and 20, do they look far enough in? Because look at line 18. So line 18 looks like it's indented one more space, right? No, no, no. So you want this to be this. So you want to look down it and there should be one clean line on everything that's at the same level. One more space. No, back up to line 19. One more space. Okay, now take your hands away. So see how this is all at the same level. Okay, so... As I move my mouse up and down, as we move the cursor up and down, this is all at exactly the same level of indentation. Mm -hmm. Now, because it's all now at the same level of indentation, can you see something that's missing on line 22 without typing it or touching the mouse? What's missing? Because you should just better look at this now. Look at line 17. Ah. Can you see the problem? Yeah. Okay. So should I put it on 22 or 21? It'll be, well, what, so again, like, look at things that are there already. So look at the previous unordered list. Where does the unordered list tag get closed? It's on its own line. So it's going to be line 22. Is that right? Are you opening a tag or closing a tag? How do you close a tag? Close a tag? Yeah. Look at line 22. How, do you, how are you closing the list item tag? Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So, that's good. Now, just to make this a little bit neat. <laughs> I don't know why Ow. that's giving you an error now. Actually, maybe it's giving you an error because you haven't closed these off. Because where's your close list item? My what now? Where's your close list item tag? You're opening a list item. You're putting in a value. Okay, line 20. 
That's the weirdest way of typing it closely. <laughs> Do it in order. It's like less than angle bracket forward slash yeah. LA. No, seriously, you're going to need to do that to make it because it's, it's crazy that you then sort of go back and back. All right, now there's another problem here. What's that? Look at line 15. What, what do we got on line 15? Eight, uh, kind of important. Kind of important what? Head. Head. Heading. Okay, what's the text in that heading? Animals with wings. No, that's line six. So up here, you've got... Okay, wait. You've got open heading oh. two. You've got a value. You've got close heading two. Now look at line 15. Line 15 isn't consistent with that pattern. Hmm. So what are, what are the things in our unordered list starting on line 17? What are those things? What? What are the things in our unordered list starting on line 17? Sparrow, flying polar bears, old eagle. Okay, so they're, let, let's just call them flying things. Okay. Now, have a look on, on our canvas. See over there, you can see it now says flying things just here, right? Yeah. Why do you think, when we get to the unordered list, why is Sparrow so much bigger and bees because it's um because it's h2 instead of so this this h2 tag it, see how it never it, gets closed yeah so should what what it? yes you, you should because what's happening at the moment is mm -hmm. the h the h2 just stop that <laughs> the h2 is applying not just to the text here but it's applying to everything, everything beneath it Sorry, so if... let's see what happens if you close it off now Right. Cool. Now, don't click done yet. So, you see how it, it, it's actually, HTML is really kind of beautiful, right? Like it's all super, super neat. Like you open something and then you close something. Uh, it has hierarchy. It has unordered list. Now, for something like bees, or what have we got here? Animals with wings, this sort of thing. Uh, unordered lists are fine because bees are no more important than flying antelopes. It doesn't matter if bees come first and then flying antelopes come first or flying antelopes come first and then bees come first. But what if, what if you were to talk about, say, your favorite superheroes? So can I type this for a second? So what if we did H2, um, fav heroes like this, and then we close off the H2, and then we go down. We'll make it an unordered list for the moment. Four spaces. Who's your favorite superhero? Can, should I just pick something random? No, like who's like li literally your favorite? Uh, Deadpool. Okay, cool. Deadpool, bam. Okay, close list item. Who's your next favorite? Uh, Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Okay. Now we're going to close off the unordered list. Right? Unordered list like that. Now Deadpool is definitely your most favorite. Yeah. More so than Ghost Rider. Yeah. So you always want Deadpool to come first. Yeah. Okay. So what we really want to do is instead of having an unordered list, because this is actually ordered, right? Yeah. This is ordered, favorite first downwards. Let's make it an ordered list. So we'll change UL to OL. So can you see what happens now when we change it to OL? It lists things. It lists, we've got numbers. So the numbers have what we call semantic intent. So that the numbers actually mean something. It's like the one that comes first is actually first for a reason, and then the one that comes second is second for a reason. We don't care about bees and flying antelopes, so they can be in any order, but we do care that Deadpool is more important than Ghost Rider. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, we might later decide, like if we're making a really beautifully designed web page, maybe we don't want it to say 1, 2, and then we can use CSS to change the way that that looks. Mm -hmm. But an unordered list means something different to an ordered list. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get done on this. We're going to another level. Yeah. Which one? What's like the last one there? Because I'm just looking at the time. I want to do you, a, you have to go through. What's the most advanced thing? Wanted poster. Create a wanted poster. Should we do that? 
Yeah, oh, no, that's, that's still locked. So you got to yeah. do something else first, do you? No, you, you have to do that one, then that one, Okay, that well, one. let's do that. Orders wanted. Ah, so now we've got an ordered list. And a cow. Now we've actually got an ordered list. The cow is the worst one. Select another enemy here. Yep, fine. <laughs> Flying polar bear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and again, so we've got the OL tag is used to create an ordered list. It uses ally, but still includes not. So this is basically what we just did in the other exercise, and I didn't know it would be in this exercise. Yeah. Uh, all right. So just keep doing what it says. Add another H2 for friends. Okay. I'm going to sit up a little bit. Ba, ba, ba. Um... Now, why are you doing that? Eat. Okay, but you, you got to remember, so indentation is used to visually represent hierarchy. So uh -huh. line 12, you've just closed off a tag. Yeah. Line 14, you're opening a new tag. So normally when you close a tag, then open a new tag, they're, they're pretty much the same hierarchy. So we're going to want to keep this here. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> when we get down to your next ordered list, we'll make things a little bit different. Okay, so this is going to be friends. My friends. Okay. And then, and then I can't. Then what is it? No. Oh, it doesn't matter. So we, we, you got to remember um, what we call white space. So either spaces, tabs, line returns. Sp there's a space that doesn't do anything. Okay, stop it because you're not actually reading the instructions here. So we've got a comment on line 13. It says add another H2 for friends. So you've done that. Then we've got a comment. On line 16. Now, what does line 16 say? Add a new um, OL to contain those friends. And what's an OL? Um, something listed. It's an ordered, ordered list. Listed. Okay. Ordered list. Okay, so it's an ordered list. So let's go and add the ordered list under the comment. And what I was just going to say there is a line return is the same as a space and it's the same as a tab insofar as it is called a, a, it's a white space. It doesn't actually do anything. So if you wanted to and you said, well, look, I'd actually really like a space here because I find it easier to read, you can do that. The main thing is that if you're going to do that, you just want to sort of do it consistently because if you do it in some places but they're not in other places, it just gets a little bit weird. Okay, cool. So you've got the OL tag. So what does line 18 say? Add three or more um, listed items, elements. List items. List items, elements inside the ordered list. Cool. All right. So, who's your favorite friend? Mr. Cow. <laughs> you can make them up or you can make them real people. Just use their first name. Don't put like their home number and their address or something like that because it's alive. Now, is that okay? Um. Um, yeah, because it's, well, it started there and, and nothing's finished it. Look at the, oh, yeah. the, no. can you see your problem? No. Okay. Look at the canvas over. So the canvas is this area here where it's getting rendered. Sh should I have put in? Why doesn't Mr. What? Cow have a number next to him? I don't know because I've got like nothing's closed that. But look at under enemies, you see headhunter pool. Okay, that's got a number next to it. 
Look at line seven. How is your line? How is your line, line nineteen, different to line seven? There's a really fundamental difference. Line seven. Ah. Oh. Okay, now, what about our indentation? How should we indent? What? <laughs> Can you remember what indentation is? Nope. So indentation was how much space do we put at the start of the line? I... Shut up. No, that's too far. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that the same as where the comment is? That's why I'm getting it up. No, what are you doing out there? Look at line eighteen. So this no, should. No, I'm I'm sh I'm shaking. Oh, I'm I, I'm. You said that. That's better. Uh, the line. If I go straight up, then, then it can be in line with this. And you know, if if you want to check it. Here, can I have that? It's, it's an easy, there's an easier way. Up here, let's go, let's go left. One. Oh, that's actually used a tab. See, because the tab jumps all yeah. that space at once. Uh, there's a whole other discussion about tabs versus spaces. But that's converted the spaces to a tab. Look at that. All right, let's not get into tabs versus spaces. Okay. The internet will hate you. Okay, we've got to add two more. Add two more friends, and then we're going to talk about some other stuff and then wrap up. Hmm. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> now notice also, when you put oh, list items on, okay, good work. When you put list items on line 19 and 20, you're leaving a space after the ally tag and Should then before the text and then a space after it. Well, it, again, it's, in, in this context, it'll be white space, so you won't actually uh -huh. see it. But normally you wouldn't have a space. And you can see lines like, seven it, through it, nine. It, but is that like, do you not like it? It would not it? be considered good practice. Okay. So flying polar bear on line 11 also had a space. I just can't remember if it was that was you or them. I don't think it was me. Oh, sh sh should I have a camel hump thing? What? Oh, camel case. So yeah. camel case we spoke about yesterday. But camel case, let's have a look at what happens if you do that, actually. Because look at your canvas over there. Does that look right? All right, well, you are actually now camel case in the text. So, <laughs> so we've learned something. But That's right. So let's imagine you've built this web page and people are coming to your website and they're reading it and they want to read about flying polar bear and they see that. Is that what you actually want to show people on your web page? No. What? Probably no. So what you're doing is you're confusing how we'd name a variable with how we're actually putting text that appears on your page. So flying polar bear, it isn't a variable. It's no. not something that we're using in code. It can have spaces. This is meant to be human readable. So try and represent flying polar bear the way you would like people to see it. Yep, that's fine. You'd be, I would capitalize the F, but now we're getting down to semantics. Doesn't really matter. All right, one more friend. You wish. <laughs> um. Okay, whatever. <laughs> done. Are you done? Because there's still a red symbol. What did I do wrong? Okay, when you put your mouse over the red symbol, what does it tell you? Expected, all oh, right. Um. Mm -hmm. 
Indentation? What? Indentation, is it correct? Yeah. Is it? So look at line 12. You've got a closing OL tag on line 12. How much indentation is there? Huh? Line 12 is a closing yeah. ordered list tag. Yeah, and I've also got an opening list tag here. Okay, so all of your ordered list tags have no indentation, do they? What's indentation? <laughs> we did this like two minutes ago. <laughs> indentation is the amount of space at the start of the line. Why oh, yeah. Okay, so you should have no space at the start of line 22. And again, it doesn't change the way it works on the page, but it impacts your readability of the code. Mm -hmm. All right, done. Victory. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're, we're, nearly done. We're, we're sort of done here. Now, just because it might be interesting for other kids as well. So your school at the moment has like a combination of mm. um, some kids are going into class, other kids like you are going to be Isolating. doing... Isolating. Isolating, doing code, or doing code, or doing whatever schoolwork you do from home. Yeah. Uh, so, in 34 minutes from now, you've got to start lessons at your PC at your desk. How do you feel about that? Screwed. <laughs> well, okay. Would you rather put your school uniform on and go to school? Um, good point. Yeah. So, I mean, that'll be okay. But you know, that'll that'll just be you're basically now working like dad works, right? Like it's always from home. You get to wear whatever you want. You can go downstairs and get a drink. You can sit in the sun. It's not too bad. It's different. We don't know how long you're going to have to work this way, mate, so we better get used to it. Okay, so that was really cool. I'm really glad we paid for that, actually, because that web development stuff is good. How did you find learning HTML like this? Eh, some bits easy, some bits hard. Okay. Um, so what I think we'll do tomorrow is we'll go back to Visual Studio Code, which we were doing, we started doing that like a year and a half ago to create your website. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah, so um, I, I, I think I've got a bookmark. bookmark well, yeah, we do on, on, your, on your laptop, but we'll, we're on, at my desk at the moment, so we've got to work on here. So tomorrow, let's come back and we'll do that, and we'll mm -hmm. do another, another hour before you. Actually, tomorrow we're going to have to do it later. Because Scott Helm and I got to kick off a workshop. What time? Actually, maybe we've got to do it earlier because you've got to go to school as well. So Scott um, and my... Well, I don't really have to go to school. I just have to be there with my laptop. Yeah, but you can't just take an hour out in the middle of your day either. So we might just have to get up really early. Uh, what time? Uh, so Scott and I have got to start at 7.30 in the morning. So we'd need to start this at 6. So you need to be up at like 5.30 in the morning. I wake up at like 6.30. <laughs> Not tomorrow, you don't. All right, <laughs> let's let's leave it there. And I hope everyone enjoyed that.